Hello, I'm Carlton Sheets. The program you're about to watch features ordinary individuals who have made a lot of money investing in real estate using my home study course. This course will be made available to you later in the program. And for those of you that have seen my programs in the past, in about nine minutes, you're going to be shocked when you hear about the incredible temporary price reduction I put into effect. But since this program was produced only a short time ago, there have been unbelievable changes in the real estate market. Hey, everybody, it's Corey. Thanks for joining me. So to buy or not to buy, it's an important question. But to answer it, there's some things we need to unpack. First, I want to state the obvious. Many in America today need a market crash in order just to afford a house, whether it's in North Idaho or anywhere else. It's an unfortunate position that we find ourselves in America today that many simply cannot afford a house due to the prices and the high interest rates. And my best advice for those in that position is to not give up, continue to save, and get yourself into a better financial position to where you can get into the market. And when you can get into the market, do it. So let's get back to the question, to buy or not to buy. What's funny about this question is Bonnie and I get this question no matter what the market is doing. When the market is down, we get that question. When the market is up, we get that question. And the reason is there's no crystal ball in this game. And when people go to buy, they're paranoid about buying at the quote unquote high point and losing the value of their home. But that's not necessarily something that everybody needs to worry about. So let me get into it. There's three mindsets when it comes to buying real estate. Those three buyers are one, speculators, two, investors, and three, homemakers. It depends on what type of buyer you are on how you answer this question. Let's talk about speculators first. Speculators are the type of buyer that are hoping to buy and sell quickly. They want to buy when the prices are low and then sell when it's high. They come under many different names. They could be flippers. In other words, they're going to buy a house, put the sweat equity into it and the money into it, and then sell it later for a gain. The other type of speculator is a wholesaler, somebody that buys a house at a low point and hopes to sell it with the increase in equity. Guys, a speculator is not your common buyer. And unfortunately, I think this mindset has bled into the other two types of home buyers, the, invest the investor and the homemaker. Now, a speculator, this mindset really started back in the 80s and 90s with the infomercials, you know, the ones that you saw at one o'clock in the morning on your TV, inviting you to a, a seminar where you would sit for two to four hours. And at the end of the seminar, they would let you leave. But to leave, you had to go through one door that was channeled with two long tables and on each of the tables were the real estate investment programs. And that was the real reason that you were at the seminar. Those types of infomercials that you saw have translated today into podcasts and YouTube channels, things like Bigger Pockets. The speculative mindset has caused this particular set of home buyers to look at houses as vessels of investment in order to get away from working for the man. And this mindset has caused such an intense focus on the market that these types of buyers are looking at what the market's doing daily as if it was the stock market. And their greatest fear is to buy something at a high point and lose their butts. That's the speculative buyer. And again, I think this mindset has poisoned the way people look at homes today, but I'll get back to that. The second type of a home buyer is an investor. This is somebody who's buying a second home or a rental with the long-term mindset that they're going to buy it and hold it. They're going to put a renter in it, and they're going to pay for the cost of owning that home, the mortgage, the management fees, the maintenance costs, and they're going to be able to make enough money to hold that real estate as it grows in equity, and eventually they either pay it off or sell it for a gain long down the road, not like a speculator who's looking to sell it within a year or two. The third type of buyer is a homemaker. And this is where 70% of you are. You're going to buy a home and you're going to raise a family in it or you're going to retire in it. And that is the type of buyer who they're going to hold on to that property and they're going to see many different cycles, ups and downs through the time that they own that home. And they could honestly care less on what the market is doing because they're there to raise a family or they're there to retire. 
Let me share with you our personal story. So around 2005, Bonnie and I were in California. We had very young children and we decided we wanted to leave California and get out of that place. And we, we eventually ended up focusing on North Idaho. In 2007, we bought our property here. It's the property that I'm sitting in right now. And when we bought our property in 2007, we didn't know it at the time, but that was the top of the market here in North Idaho. We could care less if it was the top of the market or the bottom of the market. All we wanted to do was get into the property. We saved every dime we could. I worked overtime as a deputy sheriff for several years just to, to help pay for the new mortgage. And we, we got into the home. It was the top of the market. But again, we didn't care because we were there to raise our family. And when we bought it in 2007, by 2010, 2011, we had lost 30% of our equity. But again, it didn't matter because we weren't selling. We weren't going to move. We were enjoying where we were and happy to be there. Now, fast forward to 2023. That home is now worth three times what we paid for it at the top of the market in 2007. Had I said in 2007, I'm paranoid of buying right now. I don't want to buy at the top of the market. I'm going to wait for a market crash. I doubt we would have ever moved. You see, if I was waiting for a market crash in 2007 and I waited for a couple of years for, for the prices to come down, I probably would have got a promotion where I was working. I probably would have stayed there. My kids would have been a little bit older. They would have established their roots in middle school. And it would have been a lot harder to move two, three, four, five years down the road compared to when we did. So I thank the Lord that we moved when we did. And I thank the Lord that we bought at the top of the market. Now, if we were speculators and hoping to buy that home and sell it in, say, 2008, we would have lost our butts because the prices and the equity had gone down. But that was not our motive. Our motive was not a speculator. It was not an investor. We were homemakers. And that really sets the frame for whether buying real estate is right for you. I want you to ask anybody you know that's one or two generations older than you what they paid for their first house. They paid way less for their home one and two generations ago than what prices are now. And the reason for that is, and this is a general truth, real estate always goes up. And yes, you can argue that there are cycles, and there are. There's ups and downs in real estate, but the general trend is always up. And that's why it's such a good investment uh, to make long term is you buy it, you hold it, and eventually when it's paid off, you have a very good investment. All right, so in closing, let's answer the question, to buy or not to buy? It really comes down to what type of buyer you are. If you're a speculator and you want to buy low and sell high, and you're gonna do that in the next year or two because you wanna flip a house or wholesale a house, this is not the time for you to buy. If you're an investor or a homemaker, it may be the time for you to buy. The critical question there is, can you afford it? You see, as an investor or a home maker, it's kind of like that Chinese proverb of when is the best time to plant a tree? The answer is 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is now. And the reason they say that is it takes time for that tree to grow and ultimately it will. And it's the same way with real estate. If you can afford to get into it and plant that tree, you will be rewarded with the time that you invest into it and eventually you'll have an asset that is either paid off or has a lot of equity in it. So if you can afford as an investor or a homemaker to get into the market, it is the right time to buy, especially if you're trying to relocate from an area where you don't wanna retire or where you don't want to raise a family. I hope this helps you guys. There's no one general answer. And again, I am not your financial advisor. These are simply the tips that I would give to my own children. And I hope it, 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 it helps you guys to understand, you know, what type of buyer you are, what type of mindset you should have, and that it gives you some type of clarity in how to approach a market. All right, let's get into the weekly stats for last week. Okay, looking at mortgage rate for last week, it finished with a 30-year fixed of 6.27. That was down slightly by 0.01% for the week 
compared to last week. And again, rates this time last year were hovering right around 5%. And looking at the market totals for last week, with your new listings, there was 168 new homes hitting the market. That was up over last week, which had 147. Still down compared to last year. Last year, there were 188 new listings to hit the market. We are still 11% below last year's level for new homes hitting the market. Total for sale, the inventory uh, went up 1,285 for this week compared to 1,248 last week. And this time last year, there were 798 total homes for sale. So we're up 61% over last year. And looking at pending sales, uh, this last week we had 94 pending sales, which was down slightly from the week before, which had 100. And this time last year, we had 122 pending sales. That was 23% more homes being put under contract last year than this year. Closed sales, we had 52 closed sales for last week, down slightly from the week before, which had 57. And this time last year, same week, we had 102 closed sales. So we're about half the buyers right now uh, closing on homes compared to last year. Prices have gone up again. Uh, the median price for last week of those 52 homes that closed, the median price was 577580 And that was up from the week before by 77580 And this time last year, the median price was 567000 we are up 2% over the same time last year. So again, prices have gone up. And looking at the breakdown of purchase methods for homes bought last week, again, we had 52 total sales close escrow. 20 of those were conventional loans. 22 were cash offers. 42% of all homes bought um, closed last week were 42% cash. Two were FHA, six were VA loans. There were no adjustable rate mortgages, seller financing, or 1031 exchanges, and there were two other. And as far as distress sales, last week there were no new foreclosures coming on the market, so we still stand at six for the year so far. There was one short sale that actually came on the market last week, and that puts us with one short sale year to date.